Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. I have a special guest today, a repeat guest, a very popular guest and a very educated guest, Ms. Erin T. Scott. Yeah, and uh, Ms. Scott is an expert in the markets, in uh, self-sustainability, uh, if I said that correctly. I hope I did. And in not just necessarily trusting Big Brother to take care of us and the deep state and the government to, to be our mommies and daddies, but to fend or at least learn how to fend for ourselves. Would that be a good introduction, Aaron T. Scott? Uh, with, with the addition of, you know, it is, it is my goal to, to help as many people educate themselves because knowledge is power and we've been made powerless by the lack of education for uh, many, many decades now and, and there is an, a great awakening occurring and, and it's fun. It's fun to, um, even though it's scary, yeah, we have a lot of issues that we're all um, dealing with because we're realizing just how fragile our system is. But we're having, you know, this this growth that's going going um, around, and the awakening, and the education that's that's being shared by uh, people like you and me, um, it, it is actually fun because there is a lot of positive that comes out of it. And you know, like like we were talking just before you started recording, you know, um, gives me up has given me opportunities and given you opportunities that we may never have possibly had before. Um, my recent trip down to to see one of our um, mutual friends, Lynette Zhang, did a big deal down there where we discussed a whole lot about her um, off-grid systems and her food growing systems. And all of it's um, being motivated, as you well know, by the, the, the um, extremely fragile, upside down financial system. Yeah. And your on your YouTube channel, and everybody should visit Aaron T. Scott's YouTube channel. Link is in the description below this video. Go ahead and click on that as soon as you're done watching this one. And that's great that you got to actually spend time IRL in real life with Lynette Zhang. That's that's fantastic in her home. Uh, I've had her as a guest on my channel, but you really got some insight into the, the very popular and very educative Miss Lynette Zhang. I know that you and Miss Zhang have things in common. You both believe that the monetary system is tenuous. It's fragile. It's not built on a, on anything solid. Uh, do you still hold to that view? Yeah, and uh, you know, to to be real and honest, you know, we're all being educated by history as it unfolds. And most of us who've done our studying, you and I both, and Lynette, and many of our compadres in this community um, have a, a, a decent enough understanding that we're trying to share about that what we know has to be the outcome ending of this but what we don't understand and we're continually learning is just how it's going to unfold based on the new twists and turns of the way things are being uh, pushed and manipulated by the powers that be and you know when we first talked I I was for sure that um, we were going to see some major shifts within the monetary system as early as uh, what was it April when we for April May when we were mm -hmm. uh, first talking um, the first couple of times sure because the you know the indicators were there um, but what we don't understand and we don't really realize is even though we our mind is kind of derived the picture that we're that that's coming into focus. Sometimes we don't see all the pieces. And over the summer, you and I both watched many, many more pieces come into play on the financial side of things that we're going, oh, wow, we thought it was the perfect storm before. Now we've got extra tornadoes in tied into it. Oh, we really thought it was the perfect storm. Now they're going to throw earthquakes into it. Oh, we really thought it was going to be the perfect storm with all those pieces. Guess what? Now we've got... Um, what looks like a hurricane category four that's about ready to pummel the pummel the east coast here in a few days on top of it being the same time that we're expecting uh, all the FISA dump the to the unredacted FISA memo to come out uh, revealing finally hopefully for the first time all the corruption that's taken place in DC 
and the impacts of all of that looks like a good setup for the even better storm so there, you know you know in february and march when we saw the the markets take its quick quick little um dump at the end of january february mm -hmm. and do its big dead, dead cat bounce and we're going oh this is this is that in the in the markets we knew we were getting close but there were still more clues and you've mentioned some of them that you've noticed in the bond market and mm -hmm. and some of the other uh, things I've seen you share on on some of your interviews sure. about hey you're seeing more pieces and all of a sudden we're going oh this storm's even bigger than we could have ever imagined yeah yeah epic proportions I'm thinking yeah I remember hearing Lynette Zhang mention something to the effect that 2008 was just a warning shot yep Okay, and I've I've spoken with Jim Rogers and Mark Faber, Dr. Mark Faber, who tend to yep. echo those sentiments. I know mm -hmm. that you've spoken with people of that caliber. Um, yes. So I mean, 2008 was rough. I okay, we did not have bread lines like we did in the 1930s in the United States, but wait a second, wait a second. Yeah, we do have bread lines. It's hidden. Okay. You know, we do. We got over 45 million people on food stamps. That's bread lines. Yeah. It's just conveniently hidden in that little plastic card that people swipe at Walmart, you know? Yeah. Okay. And when you talk to the Walmart, um, in, you know, the check girls and, and guys that will check you out, they say that's 95% 90, of the cards are EBT cards. So, yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. There are okay. bread lines. Yeah. It's just hidden. And it's been hidden for a while. Modern modernized bread lines, interesting the way they hide them. That's that's fascinating. Yeah. What do you think of? And this is not a statement on Trump or Obama in particular. I, I think most presidents do this, where they fudge the numbers or they massage or manipulate the numbers with employment or unemployment. Uh, seems, yeah. seems like they keep coming out with oh unemployment's going down. Uh, okay, I, again, this isn't any particular political statement or administration. Uh, what do you think the real unemployment numbers are, or what would your approximation be? The, the easiest way to answer that is, um, you know, uh, when, the wonderful thing about our community is we have so many people who do so much real work. And the nice thing about it is, you know, with, with, with each particular topic, like, the, you know, with Lynette Zhang does digging in her specific area, and she comes up with good numbers here. Um, uh, David Morgan does his digging, and he comes up with really good numbers and understandings there. Well, for that information, I generally turn towards um, John Williams from Shadow Stats. Okay. And what you get from him is he does the calculations based on, um, you know, that was done back in the, in the 70s and 80s when we were on a real mathematical system. And it wasn't, it wasn't you know, a jive monkey. You know what I'm telling yeah. you? It's, it's, we are, um, we have, everything has been manipulated basically once they were able to do that via computers. So somewhere in the 70s, after we came off the gold standard and we got onto the computers systems and the algorithms were put into place, place and all that control was done, everything started be, being manipulated. And as Jim Sinclair coined the term MOPE, management of perception economics, mm. that's what they're doing. They're they're managing our perception by playing with the numbers. And as far as real unemployment, well, when you stop counting people and you stop counting people and you stop counting people and you stop counting people, well, you can make it look really, really good. What did they say it was the other day? 3.9%, I think it was. Maybe I'm, I'm, yes. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 but if you look at John's, Williams, it's closer to 22, maybe 23, maybe even higher. And the best number to look at for that, and, and uh, you've probably heard this. I know Manorino's talked about these two numbers and some others have, but there's two main numbers that you can tell that flat out win the argument hands down every time. And that's the labor force participation rate and the M2 velocity of money. Those two mm. things tell you right now whether or not we really have an economy. And, you know, the labor force participation rate basically says how, many, how big is the population and how many are actually working. Mm. And I think right now we are 
last chart I saw maybe a few weeks back or so, I saw it. Um, the labor force participation rate was was um, like less than less than sixty percent. I mean, yeah. or, or sixty five. I'm not sure on the exact number. I'd have to check. I know it's low. Yeah. Basically, basically, more than one in three people aren't working, and yeah. that right there is enough information for you to go, whoa, uh, we've got 320 million-ish people in this country, and if you've got over 100 million of them that are dependent on the rest of us to feed them, house them, clothe them, and, and, and all these benefits that they get from social services, uh, that's, a, that's a real stress. And then if you even go as far as to do a little bit more math, and you take the take the government workers out of that number. Yeah. It's estimated somewhere near a hundred million people are tied up into uh, government form from every fr person from the trash collector to the, the you know all the people that work in within the cities, all the cities, the state governments, and the federal governments, and every. Um, three-letter agencies, and we can think about all the people that are working that you don't know about that work for the government that get a government paycheck in some form or fashion because none of that is production. None of that is building widgets over here or manufacturing uh, you know, this over there or, or sending it. And, or, you know, it, what it tells you is our true... You know our GDP numbers, which are obviously um, played with as well, that they're not even real, and that we're not doing anything. Our our economy, for all intents and purposes, from most of the numbers that I've seen, are already worse off than we were in 2008. Mm. Literally, we are already there. And the real number, the one that really shines through, is if you see that chart. And we should have put some charts together before we talk, but that's okay. The M2 money velocity is now lower than it's ever been measured and I think that went back to before World War II when I saw that so if you consider the population of the country before then versus the amount of money that's been printed versus how many of them are changing hands it is now worse than then mm. so very little money is moving and in order for you to have an economy I gotta be paying you for services you gotta be paying me for services and buying stuff and and stuff's gotta be moving yeah. And it's not. So we are already worse off economically. And when you try and tell people this, oh, no, I can still go to the store and do this. And oh, and, and they don't see it because, you know, it's the basics. But, um, oh God, I was just reading another article. I'm trying to uh, figure which. I go to so many sites. Yeah. Um, but the somebody was talking, to, talking about um, their observations of our economy used to be um, well uh, inflation is really starting to kick off too and that's another another mm -hmm. issue we're squeezing everybody the, the the person was talking to a auto parts uh, um, salesperson and, he, and they said well the price on this went up and it was like a, a buck and a half and it's like well we used to do just 20 cent rate uh, price rises 20 cents here 10 cents there but now they're doing it at a dollar and a dollar and a half at a, at a time on a, a seven dollar item. That's a fifteen percent plus price rise. Yeah. So you've got you know you got a lot of puzzle pieces coming together that are saying things are going to get really ugly really soon. And for those of the people who have had their head in the sand, when when the reality becomes so apparent, um, it's going to be scary for a lot of people. Yeah, it already is, but it's it's. Yeah, I agree. No, it's it's going to get crazy. I wanted to ask this: uh, the term prepper. I yeah. was speaking with uh, David Lincoln. Shout out to David Lincoln out there. Great, great YouTuber. Got to check him out. Um, is that a derogatory term? Is it a term that should be embraced? It's uh, it's a, what, what does term, prepper mean to you? Just like just like the term conspiracy theorist, uh, the, it's been made to um, uh, put a bad 
picture or bad light onto somebody who, who's talking about things that they're observing, mm-hmm. you know, prepper and, and, and that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's been turned into something that's derogatory uh, by the mainstream propaganda media. They, they don't, they want you to be belittled because of it. Oh, no, everything's just fine. You're, you're one of those, those, those people, right? You're prepper. No, no. Um, I see there's, I see there's a different levels though, because we're all waking up in different perspectives. And, um, I think, I think what I've tried to present with my channel is a, a different perspective on it. Like prepper is the first step uh, of an awakening because once you awake, you realize, oh, I better stock up on stuff if I can't get it. So they start prepping with, you know, getting different things. Me, I consider myself an advanced homesteader. You know, um, prepper, yes, but um, you know, I, I'm a I'm a homesteader. I I want to be sufficient with my systems because preppers begin with okay things could get really ugly I'll have a bug out bag and I'll just leave but you know they're not in systems that are sustainable and they're gonna get out of the cities and they're gonna or they they're they're stocking up for um, with a whole lot of toilet paper and maybe some water but they're, they they haven't really gotten to that next step and that next step is okay what we're talking about here is historical. What we're talking about here, David, is the potential, the real potential, for an event to go down in human history, unlike anything that's ever happened before, if it's not um, massaged just right. If the people who are in power continue to do everything that they've done in previous scenarios like this because it doesn't end well yeah and and because we have intentionally had everybody put on dependency of the system uh you know when when that system breaks down you got a whole lot of people that don't have um full sustainability and that's why on my channel i I, i've been begging people declare your independence on the fourth of july that was my mean you know declare your independence from your food system with your food systems your power systems your monetary all of those different things you you can't just look at oh let's stack silver because that's what a lot of us talk about oh the silver 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 and gold silver and gold no because you can't eat silver and so yes prepper is a good thing um and those who are preppers may um aspire uh, to move to a higher level of a um a, a, a self-sustaining, um, a homesteader, um, um, self-reliant terms of those natures are, 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 are what somebody may want to move into next because just having a stack of stuff means, okay, if things get really, 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 really bad and we do have areas in this world, and I think there will be, that do go Mad Max for a long period, you're going to run out of your supplies, and if you don't know how to produce something for yourself, you will run out. And true nutrition doesn't come in a can, it's grown in a garden. Mm. Yeah, I know that you're a big advocate of, again, we talked about self-sufficiency, planting seeds. You're the only person I've had on my channel, and I, you're one of the few people out there in YouTube land who are really talking about that, that I've seen. Again, I want people to click on that link to Aaron T. Scott's YouTube channel to learn more about that. Uh, Leor Gantz, one of my mentors from Wealth Research Group, he taught me to calculate two years of my expected expenses mm-hmm. and purchase precious metals to that amount as a, as a measure of preparation. That's a good start. Uh, is it? Okay. But on the other hand, you can't eat gold and silver. So what do you say to that? Yeah. I say grow a garden. I mean, the gold and silver are good for financial issues, but when it comes down to it, um, you know, this hurricane's getting ready to hit the coast. Uh, the article I was reading just before we um, we connected basically said um, this could be the worst system in this hurricane could be the worst system in U.S. history for these for those particular states that they were forecasting I saw three to four 
feet of rain. Feet. It, yeah, feet. Yeah. Feet. And with the winds and all, you know, you're going to talk, there's going to be grid down. There's going to be flooding. Mm. There's going to be all of these issues. And, you know, what more perfect time to do that right when we see all the markets in the most precarious place that they could be. We've been waiting for the massive uh, reset in the markets because we know it's all overvalued. And, you know, we've seen the data. So, you know, we have, we have the technology to control weather enough mm. to literally dissipate this storm before it even gets anywhere close. We have the power to create the storms. And if the storm is brought into, um, if, if it's brought in hard strike to the Carolinas in Virginia, mm. I can only put on my tinfoil hat and say, they're, 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 this, is, this is one of their false flags and they're probably going to tie this into the economic issues because uh, as I said earlier, the the unredacted FISA information discussing about the the um, the treasonous acts that were done by the previous administrations that the mainstream media isn't even discussing. And, you know, y y if if all this does um, fall together at one time, it's it's more than the perfect storm. Th yeah. This is the nuclear option without nuclear bombs. Mm -hmm. Oh, and on top of that, I don't know if you saw. Um, uh, David, did you by chance catch the Greg Hunter interview of um, uh, of uh, Dave Janda uh, this weekend? No, tell me. Okay, well, you know, you know who Dave Janda is, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, again, another fearful thing came out um, with with Dave Janda um, saying that through his contacts, and supposedly he's got some pretty good ones that they were talking about of course they won't want to tell you but apparently there's some good ones and those good contacts are saying that now the EMP threat apparently is back on the table from the deep state that there's mumblings and whisperings of that because uh, back in 2015 when we thought it was going to happen then we had two hard uh, push downs in the market one in August of 2015 and January of 2016 um, during that period of time, the during that period of time, it was talked about in alternative media that it was reported that there were there was at least one of our nuclear weapons that had disappeared off uh, one of the military bases in Texas, mm. and at the same time that the that was going through the alt media. There was also the talk about uh, from uh, one of the congressmen in North Carolina basically making threats about a nuclear detonation in I think it was Charlotte that you know um, Charlotte uh, not not Charlotte uh, one of the cities in, in in I think in South Carolina anyway mm -hmm. there was that threat by the politician he he threw he threw it on the table and on the the mainstream media and the, and it was within days um, there was a registered seismic event that took place off the coast of the Carolinas word went around through the alternative media that yes the good guys got a hold of it and they just de detonated and got rid of it out on off the coast well for verification that it wasn't just an earthquake and that it was that um, Putin came out like a week later after that and said, "Yeah, we um, we detected seismic um, uh, seismic activity off the coast of uh, of, of America, off, off the coast of the Carolinas, and it had a signature of a nuclear detonation." Mm. So, if the um, if the information that we're getting through the QAnon realm is accurate, and I hope it is. And I hope what's going on behind it is truthful and has integrity. I hope it does. If that's the truth, then you you probably do have this scenario of the the, the good guys versus the bad guys. And considering the bad guys, um, the deep state has had control of everything, all the banking system, 
all the major corporations and in and, and, and pretty much every country in this world, uh, because they have had that control, they're not going to want to give up on that very easily. Sure. And Q, Q has basically um, put it out there. Um, they may, like a, a 12-year-old child, when they're not, lo- they're not winning the game and it looks like they're going to lose, they may turn over the game table. Mm-hmm. And that generally means uh, potential or for some major events. So we've got a lot of interesting things that are going to occur before the election. And I think they're going to have to before the election that all of this happens and begins before the election because uh, it, in order for it to play out, they've got the good guys. If you know, if they're good guys out there working, they have to uh, prevent the next wave of potential bad guys from getting a foothold into positions because. I don't know if you're also aware of this, um, uh, David, but there are a tremendous amount of people who have been fired and resignations. People, you know, of course, you've probably heard about the umpteen thousand, the forty-something thousand sealed indictments that are that that are lingering out there. They're just mm. supposed to bring down this corruption. There's a lot of people been told to go away, and you know. And on top of that, we got the you know the the issue with um, with um, uh, the Arizona State Senator McCain. The question is to whether did he really die or was he um, put to death? Put to death, as was stated by that one guy on CNN. Put hmm. to death. Really? You know, the information, yeah, because hmm. for treason, because of some of the things that he's been tied to. You know, McCain's. Yeah, there are lots of pictures floating around on on uh, the internet having to do with McCain's ties to both um, uh, ISIS and Al Qaeda over the years. Pictures with the leaders of those organizations. You know, all anybody who does just a little bit or just a little bit of research can see all these puzzle pieces in the picture and and go, oh, yeah. it's an earthquake. Hurricane, meteorite, nuclear war, financial storm. It's everything wrapped into one. And to, to quote many people now, not just uh, me and Lynette saying, but the fuse is almost done. Mm, wow. You are a real news source. I'm, I'm hearing things for the first. <laughs> you know, you are. And your YouTube channel is a, is a news source. A lot better than the CNBCs and CNNs and MSNBCs out there as a news source. Uh, because those, to me, are lagging indicators. That's what I call the traditional press. Uh, they What they'll do is they'll recommend buying a stock or commodity or company or cryptocurrency after we have eight or nine or ten green candles in a row. Then they'll then they'll get bullish on something. The traditional mainstream media. Meanwhile, when we see seven or eight or nine or ten red candles, that's when they dust off their uh, markets in turmoil graphic, which has probably been collecting dust since February. They trot that out, and that's when ninety five percent of retail traders sell. They buy at the top, sell at the bottom. And that's why 95, or I've heard 99% of retail traders fail, because they're buying high and selling low. What do you, you think it. is the antidote to this terrible statistic that 95 or 99% of, of retail traders, do-it-yourselfers, fail at it? Well, the, the, the medicine that's going to be taken, whether we like it or not, is this entire monetary system is, is a game. It, it's, it's all an illusion. None of it's real. And the medicine that we take is going back to reality which means real tangible things and that's not going to be easy because we're going to have to re uh, determine uh, what values are because ever ever since they got into our our system and started playing with it they have manipulated valuations to the point of being delusional um, nothing makes sense, and when generally when things snap back, they snap back hard and they hurt. They sting when they hit you, and 
and we, we you know we've talked about the pendulum swing and how mm -hmm. things go so I I suspect that we could go through a period of time uh, for a long time where nobody really knows what anything's worth yeah that crazy things happen in such a way now the people who have engineered this are not stupid you know you know the the the, the the, the 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 elite families the Rothschild Warburgs and all this and this apparently this new um, French family um, I can't remember the name that that uh, Janda was was putting out there but they're not stupid these these families have have navigated putting themselves into the some of the greatest wealth that any human has ever had and control of this world in ways that Frankly, most people can't even wrap their heads around because none of us really know just how, how deep they've got their tentacles. So the, the, the question is, have they thought through it enough to truly be able to derive order out of chaos, as they state, and be able to manipulate the situation without it getting out of control? And my gut feeling is Mother Nature doesn't do, let it happen like that. Mm. Mother Nature is going to take control back in her own way. And I think a lot of that is, is and, and you've, you've done a lot on your channel, David, with the, with the, with the cryptos and looking at mm -hmm. different kinds of new things that are coming out and exploring them. Sure. Um, uh, I've been doing the same thing. I'm a little hesitant on it. Um, I like the technology. I, I really want to see it managed properly. Mm. And I think there are people out there that understand that this this is technology that could either permanently enslave every human on this planet or potentially set us free based on the way it's done. And I'm not sure how that's going to come out in the wash. And because we still have to go through the big wash cycle, the wash and re rinse of the entire financial system. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot that that may not go through uh, on it, um, but there's some really neat things. Um, I've got coming up um, tomorrow. I'm going to be talking with Brother John F. again. Um, I was talking to him yesterday, and he's he's been sharing with me um, some of these other platforms. I've moved some of my stuff. Um, over to real dot video but it's not that platform really isn't as user friendly as what YouTube's made and we know we got to get off of YouTube we got to migrate everybody needs to migrate or you're gonna or you're or you're gonna get left behind well he's come up with um, um, he, he's been figuring out this bit tube and he's a little more gung-ho on it than I am but I'm gonna bring him on in a couple of days and we're gonna discuss uh, the bit tube uh, platform and why he thinks that BitTube is the end game for this thing? Why it is? Why it is? Um, it's going to be the death of everything else. He he kind of said, well, BitTube might be the death of, of YouTube, um, death of um, uh, Facebook, Google, and all these. He, he's thinking that there's there because of the way this thing's put together. And we'll we'll dive into the details of it. But the old um, the old systems are going to come down, and even this QAnon has said it in his information. Back up your stuff because um, they're not going to make it through it. Because you got to remember, um, if all these indictments get pulled out, most of the CEOs, the big people, and the you know the Mark Zuckerbergs, those people are probably going to go down, mm -hmm. and it's going to get scary when when the heads of all these corporations companies systems get taken down they may not survive it so mm. it's going to be some of the most radical changes that people could have ever imagined wow okay but it's going to be exciting because i i think we have the potential with with some of the technology that we have to little literally stumble our way through and climb out of this you know with some really amazing stuff because there's been there have been technologies that have been held back from us 
for many years because the, the powers that be want to retain the power they have. And there are cleaner energies. Um, uh, and I've even played around with it. I'm, we're going to really dive into it. Um, why are we still driving vehicles that burn fossil fuels? Good that question. cost us so much money. That yeah. wear out so easily. When we could run our vehicles on water. I mean, okay. th there's so many... Th there was a guy back in the, in the late 70s to build a car. And the oil, oil companies um, tried to buy him out. He said he wasn't going to because he knew what the oil companies would do. And then they killed him. They killed him. And, then, and, and they took it away. Mm. Um, but we, we're, we're, we're sorting it out, figuring out. I'm talking about HHO generation. And I even, for just over 100 bucks, you know, a couple years ago, I, I went through. And the videos are on my channel. You can check them out. Okay. I built an HHO generator that you can run off a solar panel. And I managed to get... A wood splitter to run off it. Of. So mm -hmm. while we were out there, middle of the winter, sun's kind of low on the horizon. Had a hundred watt solar panel pumping sun into it. It's like a reverse battery electrolysis. You get hydrogen and oxygen. You pump it in. And yes, I did run a a wood splitter on it. And I know there's others out there that are actually running their vehicles on it. They're at least assisting and bringing down their fuel mileage. So there's there's there are incredible changes out there. There's the potential. I've heard, you know, a lot of people talking about the potential for anti-gravity, where we don't even need combustion engines mm. of any form, th that we, we can do it via energy. There's yeah. a lot of stuff that could come out, but then again, in order to do that, you got to clean out the trash, and we got to clean it out, and that's going to be a painful process. So this has been an interesting summer, hasn't it, Dayton? I, I would concur, yes. Well, I'm learning a lot right now about the potential out there. Uh, it's not all gloom and doom. There is, there, there is the hope for better things if, if we take control of our lives. All right, Aaron T. Scott, just to wrap it up, I wanted to ask you about the value of education. Uh, some people say that everyone should have a college degree. Others say no, maybe an apprenticeship type of system would be better. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it, it, I, to, to, to give you a little vision of where I see things going in the future, the, uh, our, our, our current education system was co-opted for control by the powers that be. They, they did it so that they can control us. That is what government is in the first place. It's government to control the mind. That's what it means. And why we don't understand this through our own education system is the, the words that describe what we're involved in. Anyway, the point is, is in the, in the late seven or mid-70s, they came out with the NEA, and they finally got wrangled the hold of most of the public education systems. Now it is 100% funded by public monies, and that's not taxes. And because we, we you know, go back to our numbers discussion Earlier, if you go look at um, the numbers that John Williams puts out, well, they don't collect enough taxes to cover everything. So they're literally printing money to do this. And when that ends, um, these institutions are going to collapse upon themselves. And it's going to be chaotic at first because, you know, everybody thinks they got something of value. And when, when, um, you know, the majority of, of studies were, were esoterical, you know, you know, how many degrees are there on gender studies? Uh, you know, even, even me being the, in the GLBT, GLBT community, I think that's insane that, you know, we're studying gender and instead of studying, like, a, you know, I was saying, um, it used to be there were accomplished people and apprentices. There were plumbers and an assistants, electricians and assistants, um, apprentices, I mean. And I was a surveyor and I, you know, started out as a, an apprentice. And I worked for years learning from somebody who had succeeded at that which I was trying to learn. To the point where when I got to California after 15 years of doing that, um, they made me an instructor for the uh, JAC, the Joint Apprenticeship Committee, um, 
and the union, because it's all unionized out there, and I taught for two years. I taught. So you, it, it's a matter of passing it down. The problem we have with our education system is it's about money. It's about making money. So what they do is they pack as many people into one room so they can call it a class, and they present information, but there is no verification, no verification of whether the individuals that are learning actually truly comprehended what was being presented. On top of that, you also have the errors that are within the teaching that most people who are teaching have never gone out and proved that they could succeed at what they've done. Most people go through, they get their, you know, take their classes, they get their A's on it because they want everybody to succeed and they turn right around and start teaching because they got a teaching degree, yet they've never been out there and had to, to make it to really get out there and to make it. And that's where we used to be. I believe we're going to go back to that. I think most of our schools are going to collapse. Most of the public education schools are going to collapse. There will still be some, I think, that are private that will do what's necessary to change their teaching style and their curriculums to become far more intense at the quality and volume of information that is being given to children or you know young adults so that we can go back into um, building good minds and not good robots yeah. and I, I know this sounds kind of crazy but I mean look at the world we live in I mean you just gotta step back and reflect upon all of these different systems that we've been dependent on that are so fragile because they were designed to funnel all our money energy control power and everything down to just a handful of people and history says that ends badly every time mm. well said wow so a reform in the education system a reform in the economic system and perhaps reform in the food system yeah yeah i mean we're gonna we're gonna go down to local production to to coin um one of lynette zhang's um phrases everything's gonna get real small People aren't going to be able to afford um, to be able to travel. RVs, these wonderful toys that you know most of our retired population like to play with, they'll be a dime a dozen. I mean, because people won't be able to afford. Travel will not be something that most people will do. The ability to hop in your car and drive three or four states that way it's not something that's going to work, especially during the cleansing period, because things could get very rough that, you know, people might not want you traveling past their neighborhood without making a road tax don donation. <laughs> you know, you think about it. Okay. Things are going to get interesting either way, whether we like it or not, whether we're prepared for it or not. Hopefully yep. people are checking out Aaron T. Scott's YouTube channel. Click on the link in the description below this video. Anything else you want people to know or any other way for people to contact you or get more information? Well, I, I try to do everything on the YouTube channel uh, because it, it's easy to keep it there. Uh, I don't have a website because, you know, for what I was spending to keep my website and the up and the time, it was so much easier just to put that in ounces of silver. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but I am going to be migrating off of the YouTube channel, and I want everybody to understand that um, change is upon us, and we have to make better decisions at where we're going. And if YouTube can't clean up its act, and some of these corporations can't clean up their act, they're going to go down. And we're going to need to go somewhere. So don't be lazy. Educate yourself and, and be willing to start moving into new platforms so that uh, when I decide to go permanently off of YouTube, that might be this year. We'll see how it goes. Um, that you, know, you have the ability to follow the people that you trust for the information that you get because uh, I know a lot of people are, are in the process of of, of wanting to move away um, and I've, I've talked with a lot of them you know everybody from Sean at SGT report and a lot of the people and you know we, we can name names and names and names and names we, we're, we're a part of the change and since you and I are out here doing this we're we are sharing that knowledge 
and leading to a little extent. So everybody, um, you know, you can come to my channel, but also you can find me on on Real Dot Video via my name. Uh, and uh, it's I've got a BitTube channel set up, but I haven't figured out how to migrate it. It's it, they've got such a swamp of people coming in right now that it's it, just like some of the newer platforms being jammed up. Um, and realize that those who are willing to change are going to be more likely to handle the change. Yeah. Those who are not willing to change are going to get left behind as this thing moves forward. Adapt or get left behind. You got That's it. your, it's your choice, folks. Yep, I totally agree with that. Wow. Always something to think about. The last time Aaron T. Scott came on here, we got some great responses, great comments. I want to see your comments. What do you think? And then go over to her channel, leave some comments over there, and give some thumbs up and subscribe while you're at it. While she's still here, who knows how much longer, and follow her wherever she might go. And I may, I may follow to other platforms as well. Who knows what the future holds. Aaron T. Scott, thank you so much for coming on here. You're welcome back. We're going to talk to you again on Looking at the Markets. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, David.